Haleluya.
from sin. So I think that's free from death. We should walk in victory and then we should walk in truth. We have no obligation whatsoever to live according to the flesh, um, to live according to the desires of the flesh, um, but we have got an obligation to live according to the spirit. And that's what Paul is telling us today, how to live as Christians, live according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Now that we're in spirit, our obligation is to the spirit, yeah. not to the flesh. We ought to live and walk in the spirit. Let's see what in the very first thing. Romans 8, verse 4. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see what the Shona Bezik says. That's the best talk on this. Okay. Romans 8, verse 4. Nigel Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes. So we need to live according to the spirit, not to the flesh. That's what Paul is teaching us as the as children of God. He's telling us about our day to day lives, how we are supposed to live. The most important event here, that was the that was only an event. The most important event where my theme is, is springing from is verse 13. Let's see what verse 13 says in English. Amen. My version says, for if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death, you put to death the deeds of the body. And then you will live. What does the Shona one say? No kundi kana muchirana mamaerera nezino diwa ne nyama muchapa. Atika na muchirana manomweya munoraya mabasa akaipa obuvi. Uye muchara rama. Amen. 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 And I summarize it in my own way here. I say, you you correct me. I put the Shona because I didn't know that you somebody. Kitchinga, <laughs> Bachabi, Vano, Tawa, Kuni, Vana, Vamana. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. That's what, that is my theme for today. Amen. I am saying to you, brother and sister, you owe, you don't owe the flesh. Amen. You have no obligation to the flesh. Amen. We are no longer in the flesh. We died in the flesh and we are alive in Christ. We are alive to righteousness. If you live according to the flesh, Paul is telling us that we will die. We will die. Anyone who lives in the flesh will die. Then what you are asked to do is to put to death those misdeeds of the body. Put them to death by the spirit. The misdeeds of the body. You will find out as we go, you will find out what are those mistakes. There is a difference between the flesh and the body. Right. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. It means to you, if you live according to the flesh, you are not born again. If you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. And you shall not tell them to one hour more. And they will be 
This is about this is about walking in the spirit, not being ruled by the spirit, uh, by, by, by the flesh. You are walking in the spirit, you are not being ruled by the flesh. Don't let your body control you. Don't let your body control you. Amen. And lead you. Where does it lead you to? Yes. To sin, to the desire of the flesh. That's right. Amen. To death. Amen. So don't let your body control you. Amen. Yes. Amen. And this is echoed by the common verse that we know, which is Romans 6, verses 12 to 13. Let's quickly reflect on that one. Romans 6, verse 12 and 13. I did to talk about it last time when I said, who is your master? You are dead to sin and you are alive to Christ. Romans 6, verse 2 and 13. And verse 12, do not let him control you anymore. Do not give him to sin or desire. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil. Mm -hmm. Instead, give yourself to the of God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. Mm -hmm. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right in the of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'll read my one. It's different. The wording is different. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Let not sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passion. Do not present your body to sin as an instrument for unrighteousness, but to present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And your members to God as instruments for righteousness. That first six echoes the, the, the theme you, you owe no obligation to flesh. You owe the spirit. You have to live according to the spirit because consider yourself dead to sin. Consider yourself alive to righteousness. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Always say no to sin. If there's something that is coming to your mind which wants you to assimilate yourself to the patterns of this world, say no, no. I'm Amen. a child of God. Amen. The spirit needs to be resist those desires of the flesh because sin wants to lead you into death. That's only it wants to lead you into destruction. It wants to destroy your life. If you follow your if you follow your body, you will die. You will die. It is going to lead you into the things of this world. It is going to lead you to the patterns of this world. It will going to lead you to evil things. It will going to lead you to assimilate what you see outside. It will change your dress code. You want to dress like what you see outside. It will change your tone of voice. You want to speak like what the world says. It's going to change the attire that you wear. It will change the fight that you do. You find yourself in wrong platform. Because that's where these desires of the flesh are taking you to. The spirit will take you to those platforms. The spirit will take you to God's manual. The God's manual inscribes what you how you're supposed to live, Amen. but not to those platforms. Amen. So it will lead you to that. Amen. So you need to live by that. Yes, the spirit is going to lead to spiritual things. Yes, things of God only. Amen. How you're supposed to live. Amen. If you are born of the spirit, you need to walk in fellowship Amen. with the spirit, Amen. not with the world, Amen. with the spirit. Don't let things of the body rule over you. Don't let the desires of your body rule over you, but let the spirit to command lead you. Amen. That's why Manson said, yes, Tanamata, but it is weird that every day when we are being commanded, when we are being controlled by the world. It's weird that every day. You need to reflect on that. That's the self-examination that we need to so let the spirit rule over your body, and that will lead you into life, into things of the spirit. The things of the spirit, the spirit is alive in you. 
it wants to lead you into sin. It wants to lead you into continuous life where God's glory flows through you forever. But the Spirit wants the death to flow through you and it will take you to death. So you need to understand who is your master. Is the flesh your master or is it the spirit? Therefore, all of us here as children of God, we have an obligation to the spirit, Amen. not to the flesh. Amen. We have got an obligation to the spirit because you are alive in the spirit. Now, therefore, walk in the spirit and let the spirit to rule over your body, not, not the flesh. Please walk in dominion, walk in victory Amen. because of the power of the spirit Amen. which lives in you Amen. because of what God did to you at the cross. Amen. If you believe and understand what God did to you at the cross, Amen. you have to follow the spirit. The spirit is your master. You are obligated to spirit. Therefore, therefore, what I just said is you have no obligation to the flesh. Just tell yourself, I have no obligation to the flesh. Hallelujah. I have no obligation to the flesh. I will not keep according to the desires of your flesh. I'm not going to live according to the customs of the broken world. I'm not going to wear those tattoos. I'm not going to wear this dressing what I see outside. I'm not going to follow the lifestyles outside. I am not indebted to the place. I don't owe the place anything. I don't owe the world anything. I will only listen and recognize the voice of the shepherd. Amen. It's a call to self-examine ourselves. Amen. It's a call to reflect on ourselves. Amen. It's a call for you to stand up where you are and, and take the cross and follow Jesus. Amen. Yes. So the question is, we need to see, how do we kill the desires of the flesh? Someone might ask the pastor, one more question about the flesh. Uh, you know, really, how do we kill the desires of the flesh? Some people say, what do you expect? How do we kill those desires of the flesh? I will give you certain clues from this, and they will come from the basis in the Bible. The first one will come from Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, verse 16 and 17. Can I have a reading from Ephesians 6, verse 16 and 17? But in addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fear out of the world, put on salvation at the moment, and take the shield of the spirit which is in the world of God. Amen. I will read my one. I'm not sure about that version you are reading. It says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming dust of the evil one. You can extinguish the flaming dust of the evil one and you take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Check the sword of the spirit and extinguish those flaming dust that are thrown at you by the devil. Those, those flaming dust, that's what it says. Check the sword of the spirit. How do you check the sword of the spirit? We shall find out. You need to be able to wield the, the sword of the spirit properly, according to the inscriptions in the word, in, the, in God's mind. Amen. Because the devil will attack you from all different directions. He will attack you at night, when you're sleeping, when you're awake, everywhere. You need to know how you're going to wield the sword. To, 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 to defend yourself against those flaming that. How are you going to extinguish them? They will come from sideways. They will come from up, from behind you, from, up, from in front of you. You need to know how to wield the sword of the spirit. If you can't, you might be carrying the sword. If you can't wield it, 
you can't defeat, you can't defeat those desires of the flesh. But unless you know how to do it, unless you know how to do it, so. let's see what Galatians Q number two. Let's see what Galatians three verse five says. So it says, Does he who supplies the spirit to you works miracles among you? Do so by the works of the law, by the works of the law, or by hearing the word with faith. So for you to extinguish those that, you need to hear the way with faith. You need to hear that way with faith. Unless you, you do that, you won't be able to put it to those flames. You won't be able to extinguish those flames. Put to death the deeds of the body by wielding the sword of the spirit. You will find in this basis, they reiterate as we go. I know those who did do mathematics, probably in culture, the integral will be reiterated until you come to the final answer. But these are reiterating just to echo the same message, the, the sword of the spirit. That's what you use to fight the desires of the flesh. Will the spirit, which is God himself, hear the word with faith, with belief, and the trust. Amen. Amen. Don't just hear the word. That's right. Believe it. Oh, yes. And okay. trust it. Amen. If you don't do that, the flesh will take over you and it will lead you to that. Let's see what two Thessalonians say. Two Thessalonians, verse 13. It's also echoing the same message. Two Thessalonians, two verse 13. Amen. I will read mine again. Two Thessalonians two verse thirteen it says, We ought always to give thanks to God for God for you. Brother, we love the Lord. Because God chose you as the first fruit to be saved. God chose us to be the first fruit to be saved through sanctification Amen. by the Spirit. Amen. Through sanctification by the Spirit of belief in the truth. You can only fight those fruits, those flaming stuff with the truth with the word of God, through the Spirit. Otherwise, you can You will be saved by the Spirit if you have faith and belief in the Word. Without that, you won't be saved. You will be consumed by the flesh. You will, be, you will die. So, we can kill the desires of the flesh. How? By properly wielding the sword of the Spirit. Like I said, we need to know if you have if you have got the sword, you need to know how to wield it. If you don't know how to wield the way the, the, way, the sword, you can't defeat the flesh. You need to know how you're gonna use the word. Jesus was attacked now and again. He knew how to, to, to wield the, the sword. By having the faith on the word and believing the word. And you're banking on the word. You need to stand it by the word. You need to own yourself with the word, not with the flesh. Own yourself with the word. Amen. Know the word. That's, right. That's where you can fight all these devilish schemes right. that we come across every day. And then you need to be satisfied. Have that godly contentment. Amen. Be content. Amen. Be satisfied with what you have. With the kind of natural knowledge, so that, that the desire of the flesh is extinguished. Amen. Clue number four. Let's see what Hebrews 3, uh, Hebrews 13 says. Verses 5 and 6. This one is a difficult one, but you need to know 
how the will be so. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. Amen. Amen. Keep your life away from the love of money. I know we work very hard in this country. We do ship in order to make it because we want to enrich ourselves. We need to grow some oil. We need money. But yes, but it is said, don't love money. Work yet, God will give you. If you overdo it and you accumulate the wealth, that wealth will be vanity. And you accumulate the wealth at the expense of the spirit. What does the way of church? Because we shift. Because you are chasing money. So the, 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 so the Bible is telling us that. <laughs> Luther says that we are, Luther says that we are, don't, your obligation is the spirit of It's not money. It's not flesh. God will give you, and you should be content with what God, God gives you. Don't overdo it. Amen. Don't overdo it. So it is said, kill that temptation to feel, to satisfy the desires of the flesh. Kill that temptation to love money, to satisfy the desires of the flesh. Kill that temptation to love the glitter of this broken world. That's right, that's right. Kill that temptation by the sword. Amen. If you believe in this word, it will keep you away. It will keep you away from the love of money and the desires of the flesh. Amen. Be satisfied in his promise. Remember his promises, he talk about his promises. His promises will never fail you. He will provide for you wherever you are. Yes. He's telling you, play the love of money and the desire of the flesh. So we must trust in the sword of the spirit. Trust in the sword of the spirit. There's a very interesting expression here. It says, sin will keep you from wielding the sword. That's right. That's right. And the sword will keep you from sin. Yes. I'll repeat. Sin will keep you from wielding the, the sword. But the sword will also keep you from sin. Amen. The choice is yours. That's right. If you follow the flesh, it will keep you away from the sword. If you take the sword, right. it will keep you away from, from, sin. from sin. Amen. So if you make payment to the flesh, what are you doing? You are building the flesh. That's right. That's right. If you build the flesh, you are making it stronger. You are making it bigger and stronger. Right. What happens? It will consume you. Yeah. It will eat you. And then you will perish. That's right. That's right. So stop paying rent money to the flesh. Stop being obligated to the flesh. That's right. That's right. Your obligation is just the spirit. Of the Amen. It's just the spirit. Amen. Because if you keep on feeding the spirit, it will grow stronger and powerful, and you will never be able to overcome it. All you need to do with the sword of the spirit, you need to starve the flesh. Okay. Just like you starve the fire. You take away the ingredients that support combustion. Yeah. You can take away the combustible material. Right. You can take away the oxygen. Yeah? And you can take away the heat. Yeah. So that's what the word is telling us today. Starve the flesh. If you starve somebody, they will die. If you stab the flesh, right. those desires yeah. will die. Okay. Yeah. It will die. They will die. Okay. So use the word of God. Christian life is a war against the flesh. Amen. It is a spiritual Amen. war. Amen. Never ever let flesh win this battle. Amen. Christian life is a war. 
to the spiritual movement. So you need to use this sort of discussion. Romans 8, verse 5, it also requests just the same message. Let's just hear what it says. Romans 5. Romans 8, sorry, verse 5. It's saying the same message. The sword of the spirit. Use the sword of the spirit to kill the spirit. To kill those desires of the flesh. Who is reading for me? Romans 8, verse 5. Okay, thank you. Yes, those who are terminated by the things of the world. What do they think about? In their mind, their mind they set on things of the world, That's right. things of the flesh, yes. the yes. desires of the flesh. Yes. But those who the mindset is not the spirit, they think of spiritual things, things of God. Yes, so use the sword. The sword to kill all your sins, all the desires of the flesh. The message is the same. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what Hebrews 4, verse 12 says. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4, verse 12. The message is the same. These are just clues to help us understand how we are expected to live as Christians so that we can confidently say, yes. We are going. When Jesus comes, we are going. We're going to meet him in the sky. Let's hear the reading from Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest flesh of God, cutting between soul and spirit, between body and mouth. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Amen. Yes. So the word of God is sharper than the two edges. The message is the same. They are saying, take the sword of the spirit and kill that desire. That desire you have to dishonor your parents. That desire you have to dishonor your family. That desire you have to dishonor your brothers back home. Because you are now assimilated to a different culture. You are not looking after your parents because the white people don't do that. Cut, use the spirit the sort of spirit to destroy that desire, Amen. that desire of neglecting your family. Mm -hmm. Because your brother is poor, you don't want to associate yourself. Because it's wrong. You want to associate with the wrong people because they are up and there in life. Mm -hmm. Take the sort of the spirit and kill that desire to dishonor your family, your parents, your neighbor, or in everyone else. Check the sword of the spirit to kill the covetousness, the greed, the arrogance, the pride that you have got. You don't want to be told. You think you know everything. That's right. That's right. Check the sword of the spirit. This, this Kelly said the message. Uh, I was listening uh, to what you said. Uh, uh, yes. Step back and listen to other people. Oh, yeah. What they are saying. Amen. You are not always right. That's right. Check the sword of the spirit Amen. and kill that desire. Where you think you know everything. That's right. You there's something you learn from each other every day. Take the sort of the spirit to kill that arrogance of thinking that you know everything. You need to listen to other people, listen to your neighbor, listen to your brother, listen to your sister. No matter how, how small they are, no matter how poor they are, listen to them. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Proud, pride is a thing. Check the source of the spirit and they kill that sexual immorality, that adultery behavior, that adultery mind. Check the source of the spirit and destroy that. Check the source of the spirit and, and they kill that desire to blend with the ways of this broken world. You want to associate yourself with certain people whom you don't know where they are going and where they are. You want to jump in. Check the source of the spirit and kill that desire. Listen to one master Amen. who is the spirit, Amen. not the flesh. Amen. Take the sword of the spirit and then kill that hatred you have for your brother. Right. Kill that hatred you have towards your sister. Amen. Kill that hatred. That I don't know. I don't know how to put take the sword of the spirit and then kill that unforgiving spirit. Unforgiveness. For this pastor, for his elder would say, who preached about unforgiveness. Take the sword of the spirit and kill that, that spirit 
That is the faith will fail to forgive other people. And you think you are right all the time. Take the sword in spirit and kill that unforgiving spirit. Kill that anger that is bottled in you. When you are in body town, you are in church, you You should be happy. You should be jovial. You say, Why is that anger still bottled in you? Why is it still bottled in you? Check the sword of the spirit and kill that lying tongue. Kill that lying tongue. Slay that lying tongue. And you are in God's house. Take the sword of the spirit and kill that lying tongue. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Let's see again what Matthew 15 says. Matthew 15, verse 18 and 20. I'm trying to hurry up. I know I'm taking too much of your time. My apologies. Matthew 15, verse 18 and 20. It will be my last one. But the that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. 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 These are no, these are what we found eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. Amen. 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 Right. Not just taking it like this, will it properly okay. according according to the specification mm-hmm. inscribed in God's manual? Okay. This is God's manual. Will be according to the specification inscribed in this manual. Mm-hmm. You will live as children of God. Mm-hmm. But remember, I say you will never defeat the desires of the flesh. Without knowing how to wield the way no. or the soul, no. you, you need to know how to wield the soul. Before we leave here, ask him for this. Say, for this. You know, you will say, you know, but I say, for more action, you need to be made inside that. You wish I had me day in day out. You need to know how to wield the soul. Yes, the sword of the spirit. So you need to know how to wield the soul. Like I said, this does will come from anywhere, from everywhere, anytime. You need to know how to kill them. You need to know how to extinguish them. So who is your master? I will ask that you. Is it the flesh or is it the spirit? Who is your master? The choice is yours. I will tell you something. If you come to church on Sundays only, if you open the Bible, on Sundays only. If you sing all the hymns we praise on Sundays only. And the moment you live here, you go home, you put away this book away. And then you expect that you'll be able to fight the flesh. You are joking. You haven't started. You haven't started. So, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for your time. May God bless you. I hope you'll be able to wield the, the sword of the spirit totally on your day to day life, Amen. not only on Sunday, Amen. every day. Amen. Because the devil is lacking, is ready to come as we leave this building. Who knows? Maybe the devil has set some snails over That's there. Right. That's right. That's right. So you need to wield the sword of the spirit wherever you go. Amen. Wherever you are going, you know how to build it. Whatever we say, something. What a blessing. Thank you, Mama. Thank you.